What's up everybody, Jared here with CarBuzz.com and while I'm on vacation, I've borrowed a very special vehicle here from Land Rover. This is the 2022 Land Rover Defender and I've already driven the Defender, but this one is more special for two reasons. One, you might have already spotted. This is the Defender 90. That mean it means it is the two door model. You can also get it as the 110, which is the four door. So that makes it unique because there's really only two other SUVs that I can think of that offer a two door like this, that being the Jeep Wrangler and the Ford Bronco. The other special thing about this particular Defender is that we've got the V8 model. This is a special edition model that just got added for the 22. 22 model year, so there is kind of a lot to talk about here. So let's get started with the exterior where they haven't changed too much on the Defender, not for this V8 model and not for the 2022 model year. So if you've started to see these out on the road, there's not too much changed here. You can only get three different colors on the V8 model. You can get this white, you can get black, or you can get this gray, uh, which is quite nice as well. I think the white looks really good, kind of stormtroopery. You've got these very modern headlights that sort of harken back to the original with their circular shape, but they're housed within like a square, very butch, very macho front end. I actually love how this Defender looks. We've got Defender written across the top because this is one of uh, Land Rover's sub-brands. They have the regular Land Rovers, so they have the Discovery, they have the Defenders, and then they have the Range Rovers, the most luxurious, and of course we have our green Land Rover badge hidden right there. We've got these sort of industrial metal uh, pieces here on the hood. I like how those look as well. We've got some unique wheels uh, that I don't think you can get on the normal Defender. You can see they're nice and gray and they say Defender there etched in on one of the five spokes. This is air suspension, so you can raise this up as well. There's really not too many indications that this is a V8 on the outside. I already showed you that little badge there. All Defenders have this kind of vent right here that says Defender on it. This one has the two-tone combination, so it's white with a black roof. If you get any, if you get the gray, you also get the black roof, but if you get the black, of course, then the whole thing is black. You can tell that this is a pretty small vehicle overall. I mean, it's very tall, like it sits taller than like a regular Jeep Wrangler or not quite a Bronco with the Sasquatch package, but it's very tall and it is very wide, but it's not too long. Uh, that's because of course it only has two doors. It gives it some really interesting proportions. I happen to love how the Defender looks in two doors. I love all two door SUVs. You just don't see a lot of two door SUVs anymore. And there's a pretty good reason for that that I'll show you a little bit later on in this video. I love also how we have these windows kind of hidden up here. You'll see those a little bit more when we get inside. Here at the back, looks kind of like the four-door Defender, not too big of a difference there. We've got our big full-size spare tire hanging off the rear tailgate, and I love these lights. They almost look hidden when they're off in this black strip. I think they look fantastic. They look great when they're illuminated, and because we've got that V8, we've got the nice quad exhaust tips. These things sound pretty gnarly, not as good as I hope they'd sound in, in some other Jaguar Land Rover vehicles, but you'll hear that a little bit later. We've got our big swing door here, similar to how a Jeep Wrangler or a Ford Bronco opens, so off to the side here. And you can now start to see the reason why <laughs> people don't really buy these two-door SUVs anymore. This trunk, like, I don't have that much stuff in it, just a backpack and some camera gear, and you can see, like, there's not a lot of room for much else. This is not a lot of depth here. In fact, I kind of had to stack my suitcase up, like, because it doesn't really fit, like, lying down very well. It's, uh, it's a little tight back here, uh, much smaller than, say, the four-door one. Honestly, I think the four-door one, the 110 that I had, even with the third row seats up, this is about the same amount of space that you would get. Now, they try to make it kind of usable. You get these hooks here. You get the cool because it has air suspension. You can lower this down using the buttons. You've got this uh, soft cargo cover here that doesn't take up too much space. But yeah, it is not big back here. You can fold these seats down pretty easily. I'll go ahead and show you that. Let's drop these down and you'll see how much more space we have. So Land Rover really had a choice to make here with the two-door. They could either give you a big trunk and not a big back seat, 
Um, or they could say, let's give it a big usable back seat, which they did. I'll show you that a little bit later and then let people fold the trunk down. And now you have plenty of space. I mean, if you have a dog, this is plenty of area, uh, for them to roam around in just fine. I don't love that these seats don't really go flat. You can see they are very, um, sort of slanted up, but I do like how they have this kind of gritty industrial material, the same sort that we kind of saw on the hood, although it's, it's kind of like this rubber plastic. Um, but yeah, very dog friendly. They can't really scratch this up or get hair on these. I really do like that as well. And I mentioned those windows feels very airy in this cabin. This window is huge. You have that window and then you have the big panoramic roof. That's all standard on this V8 model. Of course, you're spending over a hundred grand. It better come standard. Uh, so let's go ahead and get inside. So we do have these big doors. This is a two door vehicle. So these doors are rather long. I love how with the Defender Land Rover has gone for this, what I like to call rugged luxury sort of look where you have nice leather on the top, but then you have these exposed bolts looking very cool, very durable, but not cheap feeling materials. You've got the big painted door that looks quite nice if you have like the gray, the white, it looks pretty cool as well. We've also got these rubber floor mats, but then underneath those you have plastic floors so you can just get these wet and muddy and they wash up super easily. You don't have to worry about having like nice carpets that get ruined. I like that. These seats are comfy, but they are like these big tough seats. You've got Alcantara here in the middle. You've got sort of a cloth here on the outside, and then you do have a little bit of leather here on the outside. They are very durable. These seats feel like they could take a punishing quite well. In fact, the only thing on this interior that I'm a little disappointed by is this Alcantara steering wheel. I'm not a big fan of Alcantara steering wheels because they do get kind of grubby. And especially if you're going to do any sort of off-roading with this car, outdoorsy stuff, this will get kind of dirty in a hurry. Uh, so I want to talk about those back seats first before we talk about the front seats because it's a little bit interesting in how you get back there. You've got this lever, pull that, it's going to pull the seat forward, but this is not a big enough opening that you can make it into those back seats. So you've got to push the button, push the button, and it's going to fold forward. But look how long it takes. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. And I didn't start that after, like right when I hit the button, I waited a couple seconds. So that was a full, probably six or seven Mississippi to get that up. Now I can get back in. I wish those moved a little bit faster or they just had a manual control. It would be so much easier. Now let me uh, flip these seats up. They are very, very heavy, just so you know. You do actually get a really nice amount of leg room and a nice amount of amenities. Let's put this seat up as well. I'll go ahead and sit on this side so you can kind of see. Look at that. I've got plenty of leg room. This might be one of the roomiest back seats on a two-door vehicle that I've ever experienced. I'm very happy back here. I told you we have the glass here, here, here. So I feel very open. I don't feel claustrophobic back here. This is one of the best back seats that I've been in. And we have amenities back here. We've got a little USB port. You can plug in like a phone holder here, which is nice and convenient. You can buy from the dealership. We've got a cup holder down there. We've got some storage here. We've got our own climate controls. We've got USB-C ports right here. We also have our normal car outlets, 12 volts right there. These seats are heated as well. We've got our own vents, uh, lower and upper, which is nice. And then we have even more cup holders here in the center armrest as well. So plenty of space for, for stuff. Uh, here back here as well, we have the floor mats. Again, rubber underneath which is quite nice. Now, I do wanna to talk to you about getting out, so let's go ahead and hop out of the Defender back seat. We've got my mic pack tangled up here. So you saw how slow it is leaning the seat forward, and I'm afraid it's even worse going back, so you just lean it back like that, but it doesn't go back automatic. You've gotta push your finger on the button and hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not in that now it's back you have to hold it the whole time it doesn't go automatically with one button push like it does forward i'm guessing they don't want to crush the legs of the people in the back but i just got out of the lexus lc 500 and it would detect when it would hit knees and it would kind of stop there 
Don't know why Land Rover wasn't able to do that. That's a little bit disappointing. But let's talk about more of the practicality here because aside from the way you get in and out, that back seat is actually quite good for a two-door vehicle. We also have quite a lot of storage up here. We have this sort of open dashboard design. So we have some storage over here. We've got lots of storage underneath here. You can see we have this lower area that's like rubberized right here. We've got USB ports down there. We've got our cup holders and a wireless charging pad. We've got this storage area, which is actually a cool you can push this button and it will turn into a refrigerator, which is great. And then I love here over on this side, this is all exposed. This is all like a shelf where you can stick stuff. We've got a USB. We've got our lower glove box as well. Just tons of places to put stuff. And in fact, this screen is actually, there's nothing like behind it. So you can actually stick stuff behind there as well. So tons of places to put stuff in here. We've got our starter button down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up the vehicle. Okay, so now we've booted up the Defender so I can talk about some of the uh, technology and features in here. So we do have a digital uh, gauge cluster here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a zoom in on that. Um, so right now I have it showing my two gauges. You can use these buttons over here to change what's on it. You can actually, so if you push, I believe it's this button right here. So see how these buttons change. Now they're actually a directional pad. So now you can actually change what is on the display here. So if I come over here to display, and then I go to layout. So instead of two dials, I can have just one. So it's one dial and a map, or I can have it be a full map, or I can have it just be my media, or I can have it be my driver assistance. I happen to like it in two dial, but it's a little annoying how long and how many menus you have to go through to just change that out. I wish Land Rover would have made that a little bit easier like some other companies. I'm gonna show you the shifter real quick because I wanna move it for lighting purposes. So we've got a similar shifter that you'll find in other Land Rover Jaguar vehicles. Uh, it's just in an awkward position here on the dash. A awkward just in terms of look, it's actually fine. Like there's, there's nothing complicated about using it. It's just kind of weird how it kind of juts out the dash like this. You've got a little trigger on the back of it. Just push that down, it's gonna put it in the drive. Separate from all of your drive modes, you have a S mode on the transmission and then you can manually shift from there or you can do it on the paddles. You actually have to engage that to get like the fastest shifts possible. Putting it in dynamic mode alone doesn't do that by itself. I just wanted to make mention of that before we get it out on the road because I did notice that with a lot of other Jaguar Land Rover vehicles that I've driven to, that I like putting that into its S setting uh, if I really wanna drive sporty because the dynamic mode doesn't just quite do it on its own, at least for me. Um, I mentioned the Alcantara steering wheel that I'm not a big fan of, but the paddle shifters are nice metal, which is great. We've got this, I think it's about 11.6 inch touchscreen display, highly configurable. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to because I think they went for like a very smartphone-like interface um, and they kind of got there so you can go through this menu. So we've got tons of different like digital off-road settings. Like here's our slope assist. So you can see your wheel position, suspension positions, like your articulation, like your altitude. There's a weighed sensing menu. So if you pull into water, it'll actually like calculate what level the water's at, which is really cool. Um, this tells you what all of the different drive modes do. So there's a bunch of different ones. I'll show you how you can alter between them. So you've got comfort mode, grass, gravel, snow, mud and ruts. You've got sand, you've got rock crawl, wade, which is for the water. Then you have a configurable, configurable mode. And then if you go the other way from comfort, you have an eco mode, which <laughs> on a 518 horsepower V8, good luck with that dynamic mode as well. So there's a lot of cool stuff that you can play around with here. You can even look at the vehicle dimensions. I love this. It'll tell you like how long the Defender is in feet and it would obviously be different if you had the uh, had the four door 110 model and you can obviously raise and lower it using the air suspension by quite a lot. Um, what else did I wanna show you? There's wireless CarPlay and Android Auto here, uh, which is great. You also have Alexa integration as well. Uh, one of my favorite things are the, uh, you have the cameras. So if you come over to the parking sensors, you can see I can look around this car completely. So you can see the outside view here. You can see the wheels. This is great for parking or great for off-roading. You're never really gonna curb a wheel 
on this guy, which is great. Or you can do like sort of the closer up angles here. Um, so this one doesn't have that digital rendering of the vehicle here, but it, these are great, super high resolution. I love like pretty much everything about this screen. We've got our climate controls down here. Um, so this is how you would adjust the temperature normally, or if you click on this button, now it becomes your heated and ventilated seat control. We have heated and ventilated seats here up front, just heated in the back. If you click this button, now this is gonna control your fan speed rather than your temperature. Or if you click this one right here that looks like the little Defender, you click that, now this controller becomes your drive mode. So that's how you go from comfort, eco, and then all of the off-road modes as well. And then you can just click off of that. We've got all of the different off-road modes that we could possibly need. We've got our air suspension, raising and lower traction control. We've got our hill descent, and this is sort of our low range as well. Um, this vehicle doesn't have like physical locking diffs like you expect from like a Jeep Wrangler, but it does have electronic diffs and you can actually watch them sort of locking and unlocking while you're off-roading, which is quite cool. I do like that a lot. We all, we've also got a head-up display as well. So I've talked to you a lot about the different drive modes and things like that, but I think uh, the real point of the Defender V8 is how it drives. So let's go ahead and get this vehicle out on the road. All right, so what is it like to drive a brand new Land Rover Defender with a V8 engine? That's the question that I'm gonna answer now out on the road. And unfortunately, the weather has decided to, to go entirely British on me. It is pouring with rain, but you know, this is a Land Rover after all. It is meant to conquer all elements, all terrains. So I guess we're gonna see how it performs in wet weather. So I've mentioned to you a bunch of times now that this is the V8 special edition that is the most powerful version of the land rover defender that you can buy right now and i'm frankly shocked that land rover decided to offer this v8 version as a two-door because none of its competitors are doing that you cannot get a two-door bronco raptor you cannot get a two-door jeep wrangler rubicon 392 so the fact that you can get 518 horsepower in this little short wheelbase is absolutely hysterical to me. Zero to 60, under five seconds, they say 4.9 seconds, you get some slightly different suspension tuning, some other different tuning, uh, you get I, some kind of electronic differential in the back, trying to improve the handling a little bit. You get Brembo brakes as well, that's going to bring this very fast Defender down to a stop a little bit quicker and I think that this car is maybe a little bit firmer than the last Defender that I drove although that could just be a difference in the roads that I've been driving it on Florida has pretty smooth roads but I've been driving this Defender in Pennsylvania where the roads are quite torn up so what is it like to have so much more power in a Defender? Because the last time I drove one of these, it had the inline six, which is about 400 horsepower, mild hybrid. And you can also get a four cylinder version of this vehicle with about 300 horsepower, a little bit under that. Well, having 518 horsepower is nice. This thing is really quick. I'm gonna go ahead and put my foot down. It builds up speed really quickly. However, you might've noticed I put my foot down and it didn't quite rocket away that quick. That's because Land Rover didn't tune this to be like an aggressive sports car. It's not like the old Range Rover SVR, uh, Range Rover Sport SVR, and it's not like the current Jaguar F-Pace SVR, which does have this exact same engine, but is tuned a little bit more for the road. This is tuned a little bit more for comfort and off-roading. To get more performance out of it, you've got to use those drive modes that I showed you. So I'm going to pull those up now and I'm going to select the dynamic drive mode. That's going to get me a little bit better steering. It's going to give me a little bit more throttle response. And when I put my foot down, it's going to give me more responsiveness from the engine. But what it's not going to give me is super quick downshifts in automatic mode. For that, I have to move the gear lever over into its S mode. Now the Defender is ready to give me maximum. Ooh, yeah, now it'll really give me that downshift immediately right when I need it. I can also go into manual mode if I so choose. I'm going to maybe not do that with the weather being how it is. Uh, this thing is really hairy if you go ahead and shift it. You know what? Let's go ahead and do that anyway. Sport sport mode. Oh, 
Yeah, there you go. Now you hear that V8 grumble. It's not as loud as the F-Pace SVR. That thing can wake the dead from a mile away. But as you'll hear, <laughs> it's still a V8. It's still supercharged. It's still 518 horsepower. And boy, oh boy, does it sound good. But I think they tuned it down just a little bit. This is not the most powerful version of this engine and it's not the loudest version of this engine. What they were going for was to kind of harken back to the original North America Defender that they sold back in the 90s, which was only available with a V8. Uh, they wanted to harken back to that. So low, grumbly, just a nice growl to it, but without being so overly aggressive like an SVR product. And frankly, I love it for that. If you want to go crazy and tune this car or put an exhaust on it, you can. But right out of the box, it sounds good, it's quick enough, but they didn't ruin the other elements that still make it a Defender. It still rides good, even on 22-inch wheels. The air suspension is still tuned very well. It still keeps its off-road capability, and on a wet weather day like today, it still feels incredibly stable. This is my kind of SUV. Short, so it's more maneuverable in parking lots, great at off-roading, comfortable. You get like a little bit more wind noise than you would in something like a, a Range Rover, but I like that it's rugged without being non-luxurious. This is just such a nice combination to me. And if you have to ask me whether or not you should buy the V8, you know, I love it. It's it's just, it's a vanity project for Land Rover. They really wanted to do it. And honestly, like I said before, there's nothing like this on the road, especially if you get this two door version. You know, the G V8 uh, in the Wrangler is pretty cool, but not as powerful as this. The V6 twin turbo that's offered in the Bronco is not this powerful. Uh, this is just spectacular. There's really nothing else like this. And I'm not sure for how long this is going to last because we know that Land Rover is going electric. We know that the new Range Rover has a twin turbo V8 from BMW. They are not going to use this supercharged V8 unit for any longer. So this Defender feels, this V8 Defender feels like a get it while you can type of car. And I'm just not sure how much longer they're going to offer it. So really get it while you can. And it is an expensive proposition. A regular four cylinder Defender is going to cost you $50,000, a little bit more than that. Uh, you can probably get a nice six cylinder one in the sixty dollars or $70,000 range. This V8 one starts at $105,000 and it, or $102,000, I think, for the two-door model and goes up from there. Luckily, you don't really need to add many options. There's only three colors, two interiors. There's really not anything you need to add on this V8 one, but $110,000. That sounds like a lot of money, but if you are in the market, Market for let's just say a Bronco Raptor and the markups are probably going to be there at least as of the time I'm filming this vehicle they might actually cross paths in terms of pricing you might spend over six figures on a Bronco right now with the markups and the lack of availability so in my opinion if I were shopping I think this Defender has always been since it came out what most people think they want from a Wrangler or a Bronco. That tough off-road look, but a vehicle that they can drive every day, that's comfortable. This can tow, I think, 7,700 pounds. Not the most, you can tow more with the six-cylinder because uh, it's a little bit lighter and has a little bit you know, less weight to haul around. But this is what I think most people spending nearly $100,000, or in this case, over, really want from an off-roader. It's hilarious. No, you don't need the V8. But if you're kind of a crazy person and like having the most excess possible, I think that the Defender is great with the V8. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, it would mean a lot if you left a like on this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. I'll see you next time.